ask you, because because taking it to the stage could be a little dangerous. Like, what's the craziest thing that ever happened to you on stage? Well, it's two things. How much time do we have, Sean? As much time as you give me. It, 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 two two things. The the most recent was five months before COVID. I'm in Kansas City at the Improv, sold out show. Everybody's having a great time. Lady in the front row of my show. She looked like she could be in her mid fifties or whatever, laughing her ass off. Middle of my show, goes into cardiac arrest. Scares the fuck out of me. They cut off my mic, bring up the lights. Paramedics come in. I am still standing on stage in front of a live audience. They are pumping her chest and I'm like, oh my God, like, I can't believe this is happening to me on stage, right? And I'm looking at, I'm watching it like everybody else. I'm like, do you understand if she don't make it, your boy is going down in comedy history? They would be like, how was the Kansas City show? I'd be like, nigga, I killed. <laughs> Literally. I feel so bad laughing at that, man. I, you know what I mean? So that was the first <laughs> That was one of the craziest situations. And then I got to take it all the way back to Amateur Night 1991 and this place called Birdland West in Los Angeles. At that time, D.L. Hewley was the host. It's the most ghetto gangster club in L.A. history as far as stand-up comedy goes. Smack dab, middle of Long Beach, all Crips. Snoop is actually in the audience before he was Snoop Dogg, when the nigga was Calvin Broadus, okay? <laughs> and he remembers this night. It's crazy. I've only been doing comedy, man, maybe a year, and it was the Long Beach Comedy Festival amateur competition, okay? $1,000 for the winner. Uh, DL's the host, and I don't hang out in Long Beach a lot. I totally... Forgot that Long Beach was like all Crips. And this is 91. So the banging shit was still very, very active. All I know, Sean, is the night before, I was at the Jungle Fever premiere, okay, with Spike Lee. And it was a Hollywood Boulevard. And at the Jungle Fever premiere, they gave out Jungle Fever hats. Do you remember Jungle Fever? Oh, absolutely. It was a shout, joke. Shout, shout to, um, Wesley Come Snipes. on, man. And, and Spike Lee had just uh, uh, started his store on Melrose. He had the 40 Acres and a Mule store yep. on, on Melrose, but they gave out Jungle Fever hats at the premiere. Now, mind you, the next day is my little amateur competition where I'm going to try to make me $1,000. I'm on the bus, nigga. Okay. The Jungle Fever hat was red. Oh, my God. <laughs> so it didn't dawn on to me till I got to the club uh, in Long Beach that Long Beach is all Crips. Because all I know is the next day, that morning, I went to the Beverly Center. I got me a polo rugby. Remember polo rugby's? Yeah, and, and please tell me you wasn't trying to match it with the hat. That's exactly what I did. Oh. A red and white polo rugby to match my red jungle fever hat i had on some tan like polo khakis and like some white chuck taylors i'm like oh nigga i'm gonna kill him at this little amateur competition because way before i started doing comedy i was a fly nigga you know but i didn't even really have money i was a fly nigga man i get i pull up to that amateur competition it's so crypt out in long beach that the valets parkers at the comedy club had blue vest on that's that's how gangster it was. They looked at me like, nigga, do you know where you are? Did, did you did you get a wrong address? Did you not watch boys in the hood? Are you serious? Right? I'm just an amateur comic, man. I'm trying to come up here and get this $1,000, right? I walk in the club. DL, like what you want me to say, man? Almost like that same Apollo situation. Because it was like that same year. He's like, which he had seen again. He saw me as a little amateur. He liked me. He was like, this little fuck, this little nigga's funny, right? 
And I didn't have no credits. He's just like, hey, man, go up there and do your thing. I'm all right. I'm going to bring you up next. I'm like, cool. Birdland West was this. It was a super huge club. It felt like it took five minutes to walk from the back of the club to the stage. He's like, ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Alex Thomas. Comedy competition. I come up, nigga. When I tell you it was two of the biggest crips I have ever seen in my life sitting in the front row with their feet on the stage. This niggas look like it was a nigga named homicide and a nigga named felony sitting in the front row with their feet on the stage. Now, mind you, I'm a, I'm an amateur. I have to do three minutes like all the other amateurs. Long Beach was very brutal. Long Beach was the West Coast version of the Apollo. They came there to, 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 to destroy you and boo you. Okay, so I get on stage, it's a packed house, and both of these niggas in the front row lifted up their shirts at the exact same time. And all I see is two nickel-plated Glocks. And they were just like, nigga, we fitting to kill you, cuz. Why are you laughing so hard, Sean? I'm terrified, okay? You fitting to die, cuz. And it didn't register to me because Ivan said, hello. I didn't say, hi, how y'all doing? The place is packed. It's like 300 people. These niggas just said, we gonna kill you, cuz. And nigga, a light went on in my head and I looked down at my shirt. <laughs> I looked at my hat. I was like, oh my God, these niggas think I'm a blood, right? So all of a sudden I got so scared that I couldn't speak. I don't know if you've ever had a gun pulled on you before, okay? But the fear, it felt like the niggas had two guns to my temples, like they're about to kill me, right? I got so scared, I couldn't speak. So all of a sudden, in a matter of less than 20 seconds, all 300 people are booing me. I mean, vicious, we hate you, go kill yourself, go play in traffic, fall on something sharp, jump off the nearest bridge, fuck you, we hate you. They're booing me, dude. I didn't even say hello. I didn't even say hi. You guys don't know anything about me. And you're booing me? Next thing I know, it went from 300 boos to 300 niggas jiggling their keys. From jiggling their keys, 300 niggas doing sirens. They did three different things. They would boo. Imagine 300 people jiggling their keys. Well, and then they would, What's the jiggling the keys thing? What is that? Just imagine a room full of everybody pulling out their keys. No, niggas, I'm, I'm clear on it, that. What does that it mean? It sounds like everybody's got a tambourine, nigga. It sounds like, like, get the fuck off the stage. This is the light. This is the sound of, nigga, you suck. This is the sound of, nigga, go get a regular job, right? So they booing me, jingling keys, and then all of a sudden I feel something hit my face. Nigga, it was a chicken bone. The nigga sitting next to the stage threw their basket of chicken at me. Like, nigga, it got, it got violent, nigga. This is how real nigga comedy clubs were early in the 80s, right? I mean, in the late 90s. So all of a sudden, it went from booing, jiggling keys, oh, I forgot the sirens. It, nigga, it was mayhem in that motherfucker. That's how bad they wanted me off the stage. You do remember I didn't say hello, right? <laughs> you, you do know they're not booing me because my jokes are bad, nigga. I never got to say hello. So you this, never ever, like, you didn't do your set? You I did not even say hi, how you doing? Because the niggas immediately sold me their guns and I froze up. Remember, I've only been doing comedy less than a year. I, my knees we're literally shaking. Just my life is flashing before me. I'm like, nigga, I'm from South Central and I haven't had a gun pulled on me. Now I'm trying to fucking do comedy and I'm about to die in a comedy stage in my jungle fever hat, right? So out of nowhere, out of nowhere, all of a sudden it went from booze, ch keys, chicken bones and sirens to thunderous laughter. I'm talking, you would think I was Richard motherfucking prior. They started all of a sudden dying laughing at me. You remember when I told you I had on some tan khakis? 
Yeah. I peed on myself. Are you serious? I am not. Am I laughing? Am I joking? I peed on myself. Nigga, it with tan khakis. It looked like I jumped in the river, nigga. Like when I tell you my pants were soaked. So I guess the crowd thought, oh, maybe that's the nigga's jokes. Maybe, maybe that's that's the pee pee man. Maybe that's what that nigga does. Thunderous laughter. I completely peed on myself. And when DL saw that I peed on myself and he saw the boot, he just he just came on stage. I never said a word. He he hugged me on stage. He's like, yo, but his back is towards me. He whispered in my ears, like, what happened, man? What what I've seen you before. You funny. I was like, the two niggas in the front have guns. And they said they were gonna kill me. He was like, man, which one? Because his whole style was talking shit about people. Uh-huh, like, uh-huh. Which ones? Which ones? Like, I'm going to get their ass. I'm like, no, no. I'll probably want to kill you also. Just let me get out of here. Right. So the, he, he said, all right, man. He said, just go. He said, man, what the fuck did y'all do to this nigga? Now, all of a sudden, they're dying. They're laughing. Because, you know, DL, he's not a star yet, but he's huge in L.A. And that's uh-huh. his style. Remember, DL picked up right after Robin Harris died that year. Robin Harris died that year, and DL became the new host of LA. And he just basically did Robin Harris's whole style. I thought, what you looking at, nigga? With your motherfucking Jerry Curl. And then that was just his style of comedy. Long story short, remember I told you it felt like it took five minutes to walk to the stage? Mm -hmm. It felt like it took 30 minutes to leave that motherfucker. Because, nigga, I'm walking to the back and I'm getting booed and laughter at the same time as I'm walking. I just wanted to get the fuck out of there and never come to this place again. Nigga, I ran to the bus stop. So hold on, you pissed all over yourself and then got to take the bus home. And then got to take the motherfucking bus home. You asked me about a crazy night on stage. I'm giving it to you. I can't make this shit up. I got to the bus home. I'm damn near crying like what am i doing why am i doing this business is this shit gonna be is this shit gonna work out for me blah 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 i gotta i gotta give you the end of the story so the end of the story was i didn't go back to the club for two years because i was terrified two years later in 93 they had another amateur competition and i i built the balls and 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 the heart to go back, and how about I won the competition two years later, 93 amateur comp- competition in Long Beach. Ask me what I was wearing. I, 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 I'm, I'm willing to bet all my money in the world that you was wearing a nice blue outfit. <laughs> I'm about to fuck you up. Nigga, I wore a pink polo and a and a cross color uh outfit, nigga. I looked like I was motherfucking in a in a Spike Lee movie. I I had thirteen thousand colors, <laughs> and I went and won that motherfucking uh competition, man. Just because oh, I was like I wasn't gonna let that stop me in my career. Good for you. Good. Hold on, please tell me you had a chance to sit down with Snoop and and and, and talk. Oh, about we it. talked about it years later. Snoop remembers it like it was the back of his hand. Who was, won? Who yeah, won? Yeah. And Dio, Dio was like, nigga, I'm, a, I'm not going to lie, nigga. I thought you were never going to come back from that. <laughs> Yo, you want to know what's crazy, though, Alex? In this was that a crazy story, though? Oh, the craziest story. Like, like I, I'm thinking you're going to say something like that's obvious. Somebody rushed you on stage or somebody threw something crazy at you. A female came up on stage and started humping. Who knows? I this you took me so left field with this one. Yeah, no idea where I was going with it. Crazy. True story. What's up, guys? Thanks for sticking with me to the end of the video. Truly appreciate you. If you like anything you heard here today, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you know anybody that can benefit from this message, feel free to share. Peace and love. Make every move a power move. And I'll catch you all on the next video.